Hi guys, it's me, the math person. So I'll be going over question 175 on SO exam P. So pause the video quick and try this problem yourself. Okay, as me as it, let's just dive right in. So an insurance company has an annual profit. So let's denote X as the insurance company's annual profit, insurance co's annual profit. Okay? And it's normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a variance of 400. So that means they have the standard deviation of 20, right? Because standard, standard deviation is just the square root of variance. And let Z be normally distributed with the mean 0 and variance 1. So they're basically just saying here that F is a standard normal distribution. And then they're asking, determine the probability the company's profit in a year is at most 60. Given, so what is the probability that X is at most 60? So the biggest number it could potentially be is 60, given that X in the year is positive. So again, by the or conditional probability formula, this could be broken down into the probability of x x between zero and sixty, right? Zero and sixty divided by the probability that x is greater than zero. All right, let's just dive right in. What is the probability? Because we know f is a standard normal distribution, we can just normalize this sucker out. Let's start out with the numerator. If we normalize it, we can go 0 minus mean is 100, so that's 100. Divide by standard deviation 20 is less than or equal to x minus 100 over 20, less than or equal to 60 minus 100 over 20. So this is what you get. This right here is just the definition of z. So it's z here and negative 100 divided by 20, that's just probability negative 5. And right here, 60 minus 20, that's negative 2. So basically, the numerator on a little z table like this is between negative 5 and negative 2. So negative 5 and negative 2. So this part right here, if we're trying to express this in terms of stand, um, CDFs, you would take the CDF from f to negative 2 and subtract f to negative 5, so you get the area that you want. So that's equal to the f to f from negative 2 minus f of negative 5 to get the area that we want, which is this shaded region right here. But because we know that, because all these answers are in positive 2s and positive 5s, so we actually also know that f of negative 2, let's say, like, let's say if it's negative 2 is like right here, the cdf of f to the negative 2 right here, is exactly the same thing as 1 minus f to the positive 2, right? If I do 1 minus the positive 2 here, so taking this blue area away, you get left over with this green area right here, which is exactly the same area, which is exactly the same probability as our black part right here. So that's saying, so we can also say f at negative 2 is equal to 1 minus the f of 2, Right, right. We, you agree with this, right? F of negative 2, this CDF right here is equal to the whole thing area minus the CDF of F to 2, which we get the green area, which is the same probability as black. Okay, so knowing this, we can just substitute the sucker in. So that's 1 minus the F of 2 minus 1 plus 2 negatives make a positive F of 5. Cool, cool, cool. 1 minus y, those cancel out. So the numerator becomes F of 5 minus f of 2. But we can't stop here, we, al we also have the denominator. <laughs> I know. The denominator is quite simpler. X what is the probability that x is greater than 0? Alright, so we can normally zicker out. Probability of x minus mean over standard deviation is greater than 0 minus mean, which we know is 100, divided by 20 here. So then this right here is the definition of z. Probability that z is greater than negative 5 here. So if z is greater than negative 5, let's say this is negative 5, we're looking for this area right here. But because we, we know f is a CDF of, because we know f is a CDF, we have to put it in terms of CDF. So that means this area is going to be probability of 1, 1 minus the probability here, whatever this little chunk is, which we know is the CDF of f of negative 5. CDF is the distribution, cumulative distribution, going from this way. So f of negative 5 is just this area right here. So this is f of negative 5. But because we know that the 
f of negative 5 is also equivalent to 1 minus f of 2. We can do 1 minus minus f of negative 5. So the denominator just becomes f of negative 5. Okay, so we're ready to put these two t suckers together. The denominator we said was f of negative 5. And the numerator we said was f of negative So we said the denominator was equal to f of 5. And the numerator was equal to f of 5 minus f of 2. So this is exactly our answer, E. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!